Hi there, welcome back to the new video. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Sum Pip Unsupervised Multi-Document Summarization with Sentence Graph Compression. It's a pretty recent paper. It came out this year itself in the month of July. So let's go through the paper. So what they say, obtaining training data for multi-document summarization is time consuming and resource intensive. So recent neural models can only be trained for limited domains. In this paper, we propose Sum Pip a unsupervised method for multi-document summarization in which we convert the original document to a sentence graph, taking both linguistic and deep representations into account. Then apply the spectral clustering to obtain the multiple clusters of sentences and finally compress each of the clusters to generate the final summary. Okay, so what they're saying is getting training data for multi-document summarization is a time consuming and hard task. So the method that they propose is unsupervised in nature which means there's no training data required and they convert each of the original document into sentence graph. So it's some kind of a graphical technique where the edges between the sentences is based on both linguistic and deep representation of the sentence in the context in which it occurs. And once you have the graph in place, you apply spectral clustering to obtain multiple clusters of sentences. So we'll talk about spectral clustering in a bit. And once you have clustered the graph into multiple sub segments, then you finally apply a compression algorithm at each cluster to get the final summary. So once you have summaries for each of the clusters, you concatenate all of them and you have the final summary. So this is the main idea. And what they claim is the work is even competitive if you compare it with previous neural supervised approaches for the same task. Okay, so let's see the algorithm now. So authors define a pipeline that has four steps. The first one is to conduct document processing. Second is to build a structured sentence graph where nodes correspond to the sentences and edges are drawn based on both lexical and deep semantic relation between the sentences. The third step is about applying graph clustering. And the last step, which is the fourth one, is to generate summary text from the extracted subgraphs. Okay, so now let's see each of these segments in detail. Talking about text processing, let's say you have n number of documents that are of some common theme you want a summary s to be generated for all those n number of documents so you can think of let's say these are all the n number of documents that you have one two three till n this you call it as d and you want to generate a summary s that is spread across all these documents so the first step in this case is to concatenate all the d documents so you'll be having one large text that comprises sentences from all the n number of documents then you do a sentence split you basically tokenize at every sentence because ultimately the graph that you want to create has to be at sentence level where node is a sentence and they don't remove the stop words so all of the processing that they have done is using spacey which is one of the python libraries that they've used so at this step we get the list of all the sentences which we take forward to construct a graph using these sentences okay so for graph construction we build a graph v comma e where v is the vertices e is the edge and each node vi represents a sentence and the connection between any sentence to any other sentence is given by their edge weight which is always one so there are essentially four conditions that are calculated between any pair of sentence if any of them holds true a edge is joined between those two vertices and the weight is set to one so you can imagine creating an adjacency matrix a that is n cross n where n is the number of vertices in the graph and if the first node is connected to just second and third node for example then you will have just two ones in place and rest all the n entries are zero and similarly you will be filling the rest of the matrix so now let's see what those four conditions are the first one is deverbal noun reference it is common that when an event is mentioned in a verb phrase it is referred by a deverbal noun or noun phrase in the subsequent sentence so for example, if you consider a sentence that has a verb phrase, let's say playing cricket. So the following up sentence or the subsequent sentence will have its noun form, which will be cricket. So if such relation holds, then you basically add an edge over there with an edge weight of one. So if you notice carefully, this rule essentially boils down to mapping both the sentences to the same parent or to the same theme. If that is the case, then you add an edge between both the sentences. So they use WordNet for this purpose. The second is entity continuation. 
Under this rule, you insert an edge between the vertex VI to VJ if they contain same type of entity, for example, organization, person, product. So you basically run an entity recognizer first and join two sentences if same type of entity repeats. The third one is discourse markers, where the authors use certain handcrafted discourse markers such as however, meanwhile, and furthermore, as the keywords to identify discourse relation between the two adjacent sentences in any document. And the fourth and the last one is sentence similarity. We obtain the sentence representation by averaging all the word vectors in a sentence. Sentence similarity score is calculated by taking cosine similarity between the two sentence vectors. Okay, so this is a pretty classical technique. You construct the sentence representation by taking word vector representation from any pre-trained transformer or word to wake kind of model and average each of the word vectors to construct the sentence representation. But I have a doubt over here. There has to be some kind of a threshold beyond which if the similarity increases, then only an edge should be found between two sentences. Here in these two lines, it's not very clear to how they are utilizing the sentence similarity score because earlier they have clearly mentioned if any of the following condition is met, then edge is joined with an edge weight of one, which means definitely the similarity score is not there on the edge weight. Edge weight has to be just one, which is a marker of joining two sentences. Then how do they utilize the similarity score? Probably it will be a threshold based similarity only. Okay, so considering that, let's move forward. The third step in the pipeline is spectral clustering on sentence graphs. So now let's understand what spectral clustering is and then we'll move forward. So let's consider a graph G where you denote vertices by V and edges by E and A be the adjacency matrix. So adjacency matrix is nothing but a matrix that is V cross V where each row and each column correspond to the vertex in the graph and the entries are either zero or non-zero. Zero entries denote the vertices are not connected and the non-zero entry would denote the vertices are connected and in case of any weighted graph those cell values would be the weights with which a vertex vi would connect to vertex vj and all the diagonals are zero so this is what adjacency matrix is now talking about another matrix d which is a degree matrix it is again a v cross v matrix that is diagonal so the principal diagonal that you see over here will hold the degree for each of the vertex and rest all of the values are zero. And you can easily find degree by doing a row sum over the adjacency matrix. The next thing that we define is graph Laplacian. Let's denote it by L. This is again a graph representation, just like adjacency matrix, but this is denoted by D minus A. So you subtract the adjacency matrix from the degree matrix. So as the result of which, the dimension of L is also V cross V where the elements in the principal diagonal is nothing but the degrees and some values in the matrix on the upper side and even on the lower side would be negative because you're subtracting its CNC values from there. So those would be minus one, wherever the connections were there and rest everything will be similar and will be zero. So the Laplacian matrix has really beautiful properties. For example, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix give a sense of number of connected components in the graph and their relative strengths. So for example, so if we go ahead and find all the eigenvalues of this matrix, so we'll be having V eigenvalues. And after we arrange them in the descending order, we'll get something like this. So the first eigenvalue you'll always find of this matrix to be equal to zero, which means you have one connected component. So we can generalize this property by saying the number of eigenvalues that are zero will give you the sense of number of connected components in that graph. And its corresponding eigenvector will hold the information about the cluster assignments for each of the vertices. Also the value of lambda, if it's close to zero, it signifies the amount of less effort you would require to remove the edges to convert into plus one connected components. Compared to the lambda, if it's really high, more number of edges would have to be removed to convert into plus one number of connected components. A typical way of how people usually define the number of partitions they would want to make in their graph is based on a concept that is known as spectral gap under which what you do is on the x-axis you plot the number of eigenvalues that you have so let's say if you have five eigenvalues so you put five bars over here and the y-axis is the actual eigenvalue so let's say the first eigenvalue has a value of zero second value has 
an eigenvalue of 1 then you have some number let's say it's 4 and then you have 5 and then you have 7 let's say these are the points that you get so spectral gap talks about the position in the y-axis where you have the maximum gap so in this if you see if you jump from 2 to 3 there is a huge jump because 2 was corresponding to 1 so there is a gap of 3 under this situation so this is the maximum gap that you could get with this distribution of points so under this scenario you would want to choose k is equal to 2 as the number of partitions so this is the idea let's go back to the paper this is exactly what they have written we first get the Laplacian matrix based on the above sentence graph we compute the first k eigenvectors so as I showed you you have v number of eigenvalues so you can easily pick first k values and their corresponding vectors which is essentially nothing but a feature vector for each of the sentence and post that you run k means algorithm with that representation to get your k number of classes or k number of partitions in the graph so let's take an example and you define this k to be let's say 4 so we'll take out four eigenvectors corresponding to the initial four eigenvalues so these are your four vectors let's say each of them are of v size because you have v number of vertices so to get the vector representation of the first node or any node you consider the column vector which means now every node is represented by a vector length of 4 so with this you have also done a dimensionality reduction for every representation of a node as well as captured the necessary information so now you have a four dimension representation of every node which is a feature vector post that you can apply k-means with certain value of k to push in similar nodes in a same cluster so this is the basic idea behind spectral clustering now let's move on to the fourth and the final part of this pipeline which is multi-sentence compression of a summary multi-sentence compression generates a single summary sentence for each cluster that contains a set of semantically related sentences okay so what they're saying is msc technique would generate a single sentence by somehow combining all the sentences that are part of a same cluster we use this as a last step of a method to generate the summaries from sentence clusters a typical approach is to build word graphs and take the shortest path of the words as a summary okay so the seven number reference what they have mentioned over here is i glanced through that work as well so what it does is it generates a word graph where every word becomes the node in a graph and you have started end tokens and you have certain rules to define how do you map repeated words in the same node or to a different node so once you have that graph created you calculate multiple shortest path from start to end and then you have some weighing scheme that tells the importance of each of the path and based on that you kind of pick up top n paths which becomes your summary so that is the idea what was there in this reference number seven but the authors in this paper use an extended version of that method by considering key phrases to adjust the compression process so that the word paths with the key phrases are given higher score than the other word paths so i also kind of read this reference number eight what they have mentioned over here so let me tell you about that in a summary format so the idea is pretty simple let's say you have k number of sentences where all the sentences are semantically and syntactically very close to each other which is similar to what we have just seen after applying spectral clustering you will be getting cluster of semantically and syntactically related sentences so let's say we have k sentences and each of the sentence is represented by sequence of words so you start with the first sentence in that k set and prepend the start token let's say this is a start token and you have all the words let's say there were four words and then you have the stop token so this is the first linear graph that you make and you have edges going just forward because it's a linear chain because sentences can be seen as a linear chain as you go forward things are progressing so after you have this linear chain graph constructed you pick the second sentence from the k set and in that sentence you look out for words that have already been repeated in this sentence so the rule that you put in if you want to map it to existing word or not if the new word that you get has a lowercase format already in the graph and the part of speech tag is same and also if none of the words have already been mapped to the same word from the sentence if all these three conditions are met then you basically don't create a new node in the graph so extending this idea you will have your word graph in place let's say a word graph looks like this then the next step that you do is you fix your start and end token and calculate n number of shortest path between these two points and once you have those n number of shortest path 
you apply a filtering criteria that at least the length of the sentence that you get should be eight words and there has to be a verb in that so this is first level of filtering that you apply let's say after applying that filtering now you have p number of paths left for each of the paths that are there in the set of p you score these paths based on certain weighing scheme the weighing scheme if i remember correctly looks something like so let's define it as s and c be the path for which we want to define the score this is equal to summation over all the edge weights between i and j words that occur in that path and then you normalize by the length of that path let's say l and also you have a multiplicative factor of the text rank score of all the key phrases k so this is the scoring criteria which they use to score each of the paths and from that they pick the highest ranking sentence because initially they mentioned they pick one sentence per cluster as its representation okay so now they have experiments and all. So I guess we are done with the paper. Okay, yeah, so one last thing. So this is the full pipeline flow, what we just discussed. You have document collection. So all the D1, D2, D3 are all the documents across which you want to generate one single summary. And each of the documents comprise of multiple sentences. So you concatenate all the sentences in the next step as a part of text processing. And then you construct a sentence graph where each of the node you see is labeled as a sentence. Once you have this, you apply spectral clustering. So in this case, let's say if K was two, so you get these two clusters. Post you have the clusters, you apply the compression step and you have one sentence per cluster as the output. So this is the entire flow. So this was it. So if you like such content, do share it with your friends. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more interesting content. I'll meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.